We all know how unpredictable the weather can be, and we've all experienced power outages during severe storms. And how many times have we relied on our generator to get us out of trouble and it wouldn't start? Hi, it's Steve from Part Select. In this video, we'd like to share with you some tips on how to get your generator in top working condition so it won't let you down when you need it the most. Now, if you have a larger generator, you probably have a battery assist to get it started you'll want to make sure that your battery is fully charged at all times. That may involve putting it on a battery charger on a regular basis. To verify that your battery is working properly, simply try to start your generator. If it doesn't turn over easily or won't turn over at all, you'll want to look at your battery. First thing we'll inspect is the cables to make sure that they're tight, not corroded or damaged. If they seem to be fine, you can use a voltmeter and check your battery to ensure that it has the proper output voltage. If it doesn't, try recharging it. If it won't hold a charge, you'll need to replace it so it doesn't let you down when you need it the most. Now that we've checked out the battery start function and made sure that that's okay, we're next going to look at our engine oil. Most modern generators now have an oil level sensor. If your oil level is too low, your generator won't start, so it's important that we check that oil level to begin with. If you use your generator on a regular basis, you should follow the manufacturer's recommendations on how often you should change your oil, and typically that would be at least once a year. Now that we've taken care of the oil, our next step will be to look at the fuel system. Now with any gasoline generator, it's really critical that you not store fuel in the tank. You should always keep fresh premium grade fuel on hand, but never stored in the tank. We should also check the fuel tank to make sure that it's in good shape, has no sediment in the bottom. And if your model doesn't have an inline fuel filter, it probably has a filter that fits into the filler opening. So you'll want to remove that and inspect it. You can then view the inside of the tank. And if there's any sign of corrosion, you'll need to have that replaced. Now that we've checked out our tank and tank filter, we'll next want to look at the fuel lines going to the carburetor to ensure that they're in good shape, not cracked or corroded or leaking. And if you see any indication of leaking or cracks, you'll want to replace that fuel line so that it doesn't let you down. Now that we've verified our fuel lines are in good shape, the next thing we'll want to look at is our air filter. So we'll just pop this cover off and we'll inspect the filter. Make sure it's not plugged up. Now if your filter needs to be clean, you simply wash it with soapy water, rinse it well, and dry it well. And typically these foam type filters require that you saturate them with clean engine oil, and then wring out any excess, and then reinstall them. If the filter's damaged, you'll want to replace it. Now that we've inspected the air filter, our next step will be to check out the recoil starter. So what we'll want to do is inspect that cord, make sure it's not frayed or damaged, and also check the knot on the end to make sure it's secure. If you find any damage with that cord, you'll need to remove that starter and replace it. Now that we've checked out the recoil starter, the last thing we'll want to look at on the engine is the spark plug. So next we'll locate the spark plug wire, pull that off the end of the plug, and we'll want to inspect that cap to make sure that there's no signs of any corrosion in there. If so, you'll need to have that serviced. And next, we'll remove the plug. Now, if there's any signs of excessive wear or corrosion on the end of that plug, you'll need to replace it. Now that we've checked out all the essential components on the engine and made sure that they're in top working order, just have a quick look at any of the electrical connections. Check ones going to a fuel solenoid, to your starter, any of those things, looking for any signs of corrosion. If you find something, you'll need to either have that repaired or replaced. Once we've done all that, add a little bit of fuel to it, and we'll start it up and make sure it runs smoothly. We'll plug something into one of the outlets and verify that the generator portion is working fine. Then we're ready to shut it down, drain the fuel out, and put it safely into storage. And you'll be ready. Thank you so much for watching this video. We certainly hope that these tips will help you with your generator maintenance. For more videos on appliance repair, maintenance and cleaning tips, be sure to visit our website. 
If you have any suggestions, be sure to share them in the comments section below. And hey, don't forget to subscribe.